Hello guys, I'm Isaiah Trice and today we'll be talking a little bit about Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart and his Fantasia number no. 3 which is in D minor. So the first movement of this piece is an andante and it's just a great use of how you can expand upon one chord and I really appreciate this piece because you know it's beautiful to play and it also evokes that sense of like classical era which is you know really what I'm looking for in a Mozart piece. But I'll play it for you, and then after that we'll discuss a little bit more about, you know, the chord changes it goes through, and how, as composers, you can, you know, include certain aspects of this work within your own, you know, style or genre. So as we take a look at this piece, you know, it's a very kind of, I'd say it's, it's a very kind of solemn, you know, very solemn in D minor. D minor, you know, a lot of composers nowadays like Hans Zimmer will use it for, you know, suspenseful moments and whatnot. D minor is a very powerful, you know, uh, scale. So it starts off on these, you know, D minor um, triads. And then it's going to move to, which this is interesting because this is like, you know, way ahead of Mozart's time. If you look at this, G minor, this is a G minor, but you're going to add a six to it. So it's almost like a G minor six chord, you know, this is kind of like almost jazzy, you know, very interesting. And then we're going to go to what kind of appears as though it's like a C Lydian with just a, you know, a uh, D major on top of it that's kind of strange too but it gives you the you know it gives you the persona of a classical piece and then from there we're going to move to this is very interesting now if you take a look at this this is kind of strange but this again I get the feeling that this is simply just, you know, a um, B flat minor. It has that kind of tonality to it. And this is because, of course, if you look at your relative minor of D major, that's going to be B flat minor. And D major and D minor have a very similar, you know, style to them. If you're going to look at the natural minor. you have those three different you know general styles of minor scales which are all being experimented on within here so it's only natural that you know we're going to have this this b flat minor in there which actually sounds pretty beautiful the way it's played and then just a little bit of chromaticism we're going to move down a half step and what i really get out of this chord is just an f major you know, that sounds to me like an F major, which of course, in D minor, is the third chord, you know. Now, the only thing is that, of course, you don't have this, you know, augmented F because he takes that out and substitutes it for a C. But then, you know, you still get that idea that it's going to be an F, you know. And then after that, we have this very interesting chord. Right 
here. And you know what I see in this? I see a, a E flat major with just a little bit, you know, that F on top is just some, you know, accenting, you know. So I see an E flat major right there. And then of course, after that, in this, I'm gonna see, I see E, E dominant. And where does E dominant wanna go? Come on, it's the fifth scale degree in A major, which it arrives at. A little bit of a, you know, expressiveness. Nothing that, you know, is, it's not very particular to the key, but just a little bit of, you know, expressiveness. Sounds beautiful. Gives it the, you know, the sense that it's, it is like a fantasy, you know, it is a fantasy. So it gives it that sense. But overall, this is just a, it's an incredible piece to study because if you are to, you know, say, use the styles that you see here with this triplet pattern that continues the entire way. Or if you are to use the different styles of modulation that he's using with, you know, using natural harmonic, uh, Aeolian, you know, type of minor scales, if you're able to use that in your compositions, it's gonna improve your compositions a lot. And if you're trying to go for a style that's more Baroque and classical, which of course this is very classical era, you know, you're gonna be able to achieve that. And you can just hear it right when you start playing, it sounds very, you know, classical era, not Bach era, but classical era. It sounds like a Mozart piece, especially with some of the flourishes that he does. Although we have some chords in here that are quite strange, quite jazzy. That would be that, you know, um, some of this, this B flat, B flat minor, with, you know, a D sus4 on top. Of course, that sounds a little bit jazzy. And then you have other forms of it shown throughout the piece. But um, this is just a great piece to play. It's pretty easy to learn. I'd recommend learning it. But um, thank you for watching this video. I enjoyed taking a look at this piece, you know, uh, going over it and talking about how we can improve our compositions based on some of the things that we've learned from it. If you like this type of content, please subscribe and like the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you much. I'm Isaiah Trace.